Hi, I'm Mr. Gad. And I'm Mr. Wilhelm. Today we are going to be showing you the different ways to measure um, using measurement in the classroom. Um, so, um, what are the different things we're going to use? We have four major types of measurement. We have temperature, we have volume, we have mass, and we have length. Length. Okay. Very so good. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to show you how to use a thermometer to measure temperature. Now, I have goggles here, but this is not on. It's not hot. It's cold water. But if I was going to be using hot water, I'd have to put on thermometer. I mean, goggles. So I don't want to splash in my you eyes. Don't want to put on a thermometer, then. No, I don't want to put on a thermometer. Okay. So anyway, I'm not going to use the goggles, but if we were, we would be using goggles. Okay. So what is this here? This would be a thermometer. Okay. Cool. Very good. This is glass. We need to be careful with this because it will break. It has this little red piece on here. You can see right here in the middle. It's triangular. It's going to keep the thermometer from rolling off the countertop. Very neat. Wow. Okay, so you take this, if we were going to take the temperature of this, we could still take the temperature of any water, but if this was boiling, even if it's not boiling, you never just set the thermometer in like that. In order to get the reading, you place the thermometer and you hold it inside the water or the liquid that you're taking. Once this red line inside, this is not mercury by the way, this is a colored alcohol, so we don't use mercury thermometers anymore. So once that is stabilized, you would then take the reading while it's in there and you would read it. Okay, looking at it, and you would read this says 26 degrees Celsius. Remember, degrees Celsius, and this is just, you know, room temperature water. And we measure using Celsius in science, not Fahrenheit. That's a little That's different a for you. Uh, boiling is 100 degrees Celsius, and freezing is 0 degrees Celsius. That's different from Fahrenheit. In Fahrenheit, boiling is 212 degrees Fahrenheit, and then also freezing is... Minus, or excuse 30, me, 32, 30, 30, 32 degrees. Okay, and then if this was boiling and I was going to remove this, I'll be using these beaker tongs and I would grab the beaker tongs here and it's rubber coated here so it doesn't slip off. It grabs this and I can move this beaker off and onto the hot plate. This is a hot plate. Anyway, it's not boiling. Um, we're going to move to the next one. Let's show this real quick. I'm going to oh, do a okay. close-up view here so you guys can see, and you'll see this obviously in class. You can see the thermometer. Hopefully that's uh, in focus. But you can see here in the thermometer, here is zero. That would be freezing on the Celsius temperature scale. And you see the little red line that moves up, and you simply match the lines that are printed on the thermometer with the red line to get an accurate reading. And then obviously way up here is 100 degrees Celsius, which would be boiling. So if water was boiling, the red line would be all the way up here to the top. And if it was really, really cold in this room, it would be all the way down here at zero. But it's not. It's room temperature, which is about 28 degrees Celsius, which is roughly right here on the thermometer. All right. Awesome. Good job. Good to go home. All right. So our next thing up here is we're going to show you how to uh, measure the mass of an object using a triple beam balance. The triple beam because there's three beams, okay, one, two, and three that you will use the reading for. And mass is how much matter is in an object. How much stuff is in something. That is mass. Now that's a little bit different from weight. We're going to talk about weight later on in the year. Okay, weight is the measure of gravity, a measure of gravitational force. So we're going to talk about mass. How much stuff is in an object and this thing right here, the triple beam balance, measures mass. Right, so the first thing you do is you are going to make sure that the scale, the triple beam balance, is set, is um, Zero zero. Off, zeroed out. And so there's a zero sign right over here. And all these weights that they click in have to be on the zero mark. And then this thing has to be at zero because otherwise you will not get an accurate reading. Now, you never put the object that you're weighing right on the triple beam balance. Number one, this is a golf ball and it will just roll off, right? But also if you put a powder on here, you don't want to put it directly on here because if the next person comes and puts something on there, doesn't mix with that powder, then we can have an accident. So we always use a container to hold it. So we're going to get the, the mass of this. Okay, so... We're not I, finding the weight, we're finding the mass. Finding the mass. So if I put, I'm using a, 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 a Petri dish to hold the golf ball. But when I put the Petri dish, the Petri dish sets this out of zero. So there are two ways to do this. Find the mass of the Petri dish first. Okay, so we're going to get the final out. So, I, I can try and see, okay, that's the 10 gram line at the back. And you can see how it drops down. So I know it's way less than 10. Okay, so I'm going to slide this until I balance it out. And 
and right it's a, there, it's pretty it's about close. Eight. It's right here at eight. It's about eight grams. This one, this rider in the back is at zero. This middle rider is at zero. This front rider is at eight. We measure mass using grams. Therefore, this petri dish weighs eight grams. Okay, so now to get the mass of the golf ball is we are now going to get the total mass of both of these together. So we put this golf ball in. Now we're going to measure it. Mr. Wilhelm, do you want to? Okay, in this situation, I want to try to use the back rider first. I want to see if the back rider, and that's this little weight back here on this back beam of the triple beam balance, is going to have any effect. If I move this back rider over, I want to see if the pointer goes down. So I keep moving it over, and it goes down. If it goes down, that means I'm gone a little bit too far, and I need to back up one. So I back it up one, and I need to go back again. I get it until... We're pretty close. We're pretty close right now. Also, a point that you guys need to understand is there are notches on the beams. Every rider must be in the notch. If the, not, if the rider is not setting in the notch, you will not get an accurate reading. So, well, I made a mistake here. That's my fault. I should put this back to zero as well. Okay, try to go to the 50s. Okay, okay, so let's go to the 50 and see what happens. Yeah, now we're a little bit closer. Okay. Let's see. All right. Let's go to 60. Let's go to 60. 60 is too far. So it's between 50 and 60. We can figure that out. Okay. So we're going to go back to 50, and then now what we're going to do, we're going to move the front rider, okay, until we get the pointer pointing directly at the zero point, which is pretty close. So we're going to say it's up here, it's 4. The back one is 50. If I simply take 50 and add it to 4, that is. 54, 54, again we measure mass in grams. However, that's the total of the petri dish and the golf ball. So to find just the golf ball, we subtract the 8 grams from the petri dish, which will give us so 54 minus 8 is going to give us 46. So it was 46 grams is the weight, or the mass, sorry, of this golf ball. I'm going to go show this up in front when you get the next okay. one. I'm going to show you close up the different riders. So you can see the different riders over here. The front one measures in, gra in a single grams or tenths of a gram. This measured in tens. Okay, and you can hear the notches. And the back one is in hundreds. Okay, so that's your triple beam balance. This little button at the back here, if you wanted to zero it out, if it wasn't balanced, that button helps you zero it out. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next one. Very good. So that was mass. This right here is volume, measuring volume. Now you can actually measure volumes in several different ways. You can measure solid volume. You can measure gas volume. Here we have liquids, water being a liquid, so we're measuring liquid volume. We use a graduated cylinder to measure liquid volume. These are both graduated cylinders. They're two different types. This is a glass graduated cylinder. It goes up to 50 milliliters. This is a plastic graduated cylinder. It goes up to 100 milliliters. Um, both can measure volume. They're just different sizes and different shapes. Uh, we measure liquid volume using, as I just said, milliliters. That is our unit. A graduated cylinder is the most accurate way to measure. I'll give an example here. This here goes up to, this graduated cylinder goes up to 100 milliliters. Look how tall it is. It's way taller than the beaker. But 100 milliliters on this graduated cylinder is only to the first line on this beaker. So you can see the difference here. This measures larger liquid and not so accurate, whereas the graduated cylinder is the most accurate. So let's figure out how do we measure using this. This one we put a dye in so you can see it a little bit better. I'll come show it right up front here. You can see. Okay, but you never, ever pick up the graduated cylinder to read the volume because the water is going to tilt. So to read the volume of this, you're going to be eye level. Okay? Now, you're going to see a curved line. It looks like that. That's called the meniscus. To read the correct volume, read the bottom of the meniscus. So when I read that, it tells me the bottom here is 20, the next big line is 30, the halfway is 5, so it's 25. I'm going to go up and it's reading 26 milliliters. Lowercase m, capital L, milliliters. Real simple. Very good. And if I was to use this plastic one right here, i do the exact same thing. i put it on a flat surface. Again, I want to get down at eye level. If I try to read it from right here, I can't really tell 
what the accurate reading would be. So I'm going to get down to eye level, okay, right here. The bottom of the meniscus is right there at the 80 milliliter line, okay? And so there will be 80 milliliters in that graduated cylinder. Very good. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to move to the next one. Neck is length. Oh, this, this reminds me of some back memories when I was in a grade school. You should get beaten. Yeah, I was a bad student. I, I, I never got it because I was the perfect student, but just other kids in my class. Anyway, so this over here is a meter stick. Okay, a meter stick. And obviously, a meter stick, the length of a meter stick is? One meter. One meter. Now, there are two sides to this meter stick. On the front side is metric. Okay, and it reads, going across, it starts at zero and goes all the way to 100. And the big markings, those are centimeters. And there are one, there are 10 of these. And each of those 10 is a, um, each of those 10 are 100 millimeters. So there are 100 centimeters in this ruler. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 100 times 10 is 1,000. There are 1,000 of these little lines, 1,000 millimeters. So this is a metric. Uh, uh, ruler. And on and the back, you can see that stick. we have, this is, as we said, this is a metric, uh, this is a meter stick, okay, is not a yard stick because this does not measure a yard, okay? If you know anything about the length yards, you know that there are 36 inches in a yard. There are actually, what, about 39 and 3 eighths inches in this particular stick, so that's not a yard, okay? There just so happens to have inches on the other side, but we never use inches in science. We always use okay, centimeters and yeah. meters in science. And this is exactly 100 centimeters, which would be one meter. And we also, when we write, if we were going to write, uh, let's say 55, we would never write it as a fraction. We would never write 50 and a half. We'd always write 50.5. 50 50.5. So it's always, always in decimals. decimals. No fractions. It's much harder to work with. That's why we don't use um, inches because there's too, it's too many fractions in, in, in the too, system. It's too confusing. Yeah, and also, this here, all of these measurements, um, it's the universal way to measure things. Okay, and then we could system. also use this right here. This is a, a ruler, but this is a metric ruler. This is not a standard inches ruler. In a standard inches ruler, you might have 12 inches. Uh, this is a metric uh, ruler has 30 centimeters, and I'll show you a little bit closer here. You can see that there are no inches, there are no fractions. It is all centimeters, and uh, the little bitty lines right here would be millimeters. So this is the same thing as the meter stick. It's just a smaller version. So for measuring smaller distances, smaller lengths, we would use a metric ruler versus larger distances and larger lengths, we would use a meter stick. So if I was going to me measure that this cabinet, I'll use the meter stick, as opposed to if I was going to measure um, this box, use okay, the, then I'll use the, the, the metric ruler. ruler. And just, it's, oh, go ahead. No, no, no. You, and go, and I'll, I'll also, you always measure from the end, obviously, okay? And we use decimals. So if it's halfway between five and six, halfway between five and six is not five and a half, it would be 5.5. Five. Five. Right. Well, I hope you enjoyed our video. This was actually our first video that we made together on measurement, and uh, we look forward to you learning from this. And if you did not understand, that's what the rewind button is for. Go back and watch this video again. You guys are going to get questions on this uh, the following days in class. Make sure that you understand so that you come ready to